following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618 the trader's edge now steve rhodes good afternoon folks welcome to the january 10th almost said december 10th the january 10th the fantastic friday edition of today's trader zed show i'm your stevie perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past hope everyone out there is having a great day hey let's make sure we have an extraordinary one and the easiest way to do that well it's to always remember that life is happening for us not to us that's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show kicked off on fantastic, fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to La Show. Right now, we've got a little bit of a mixed bag out here. You've got the Dow trading down 46 points, less than two tenths of a percent to the downside. So, really sideways ish type move. The SP is flat, up one full point. The NASDAQ 100 up seven and a half points. The Russell's off. That's the actually the leader to the downside percentage wise is the spot volatility. No, it is, the, it is but uh, really it's the semis. They're off seven points out there. You've got gold of five bucks, silver 17 pennies, light sweet crude is back 30 cents, natural gas uh, is up six pennies today. Uh, that's trading out with the, the, fe the uh, February contract is trading out at 222. We'll be rolling over to March here shortly. You've got um, the 30 year Treasury is up uh, 25 uh, ticks out here, leading the charge dollar wise. The upside it's Cinex Corp, 17 bucks, 13 percent. Mercado Libre, 16 dollars, two and a half percent. Intuitive Surgical, about 13 bucks or two percent to the downside. It is Amazon off 11 bucks, a little over a half percent. Portolo Pharmaceuticals down 41 percent. That's a Haircut off ten dollars. WD forty. Uh, it's got grease in the skids to the downside. Off nine dollars or four, nearly five percent to the downside. So let's just begin. Get a quick overview. What are the markets doing here? Let's take a look at really short-term time frame. Well, we can look at all of the charts, but let's begin by taking a look at the ES mini. Don't be short right now. Why would Stevie possibly say that? Well, if we take a look at what the ES mini did here this morning, traded off and moved right down to a second level of support, thirty-two seventy twenty-five. That's a breakout level of support that was uh, pr produced by the uh, TD9 count. But more important than that, let me get my cursor out here. You'll see that the low was made with not just a hammer candle, which it was, but it happened to be bar number nine of that TD setup nine count. Both you and I know that uh, when that count uh, hits bar eight, nine, or the bar after nine, we can see some type of bottom that's what we've got here. So what you should expect, what you should anticipate if you're a short-term trader, well, one, it could be either just simply a bottom, but first where price is going to move up to is test resistance, which is going to be Stevie's green line. Right now, that's priced at 32.79. That'll continue to change up and down, ticks at a time as price moves, but we should see that. Now, if we don't see that, well, it's telling you about weakness in the market, but you've got a valid bottom pattern uh, that was... Uh, uh, that took price right back to a level of support, 32.70.25. And now price should move up to Stevie's green line. Any close above that, well, right now there's no new profiles that I have. So you'd be looking at resistance, potential resistance around 32.83 and a quarter. And really, you've got a breakdown level at 32.84. So I'd really say that anything above Stevie's um, oscillator and change line, 
currently 3270.49, should go ahead and lead to a rally up to at least the 3284 level. That's what the 30 minute time frame chart is showing. Let's go take a look at a bit larger time frame. What would that larger time frame be? Well, that would be the daily time frame. If we take a look at the daily time frame, price so far, all it's doing today is testing Stevie's green line. That's priced out at about 3272 right now. We're only four points above that. Price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. Not a big deal unless we see some type of bearish reversal candle today. We're in wave number uh, six, uh, as what I've got it. That's letter F on my screen. Uh, tops can form certainly here, but it could most, we, we look for the market singing in the key of G or wave number six, seven. Uh, by the way, that could, the earliest that could happen inside the Yes Mini would be Tuesday. You need a lower high on Monday and then a higher high above today's high on Tuesday in order to get that seventh wave. If we wanted to sum up, what is the week? been all about really i mean lots of action out there the threat of war all those types of things but what has the week really been about all week for you and i it has been nothing more than on the weekly basis a test of stevie's green line that was at 3206.41 or that's at 3206 as we speak right now it was a different figure on uh tuesday but uh nonetheless all the price is done for the equity futures contract. So here's the weekly contract for the ES. Let me make it easier for you so you can really see what's going on. I think I meant to include this uh, chart inside the uh, newsletter at some point in time and forgot that I had actually built it. But here it is. Here you're going to go ahead and take a look at all four equity futures contracts. And what do you see that each of them have in common? We're even talking about the Russell 2000, which no doubt is the weak link when we take a look at intraday charts, daily charts out here. But the reality is there is no intermediate term time frame change in trend inside the Russell 2000. That's the bottom panel of this uh, that we're looking at. So you've got the ES Mini up top, below that the NQ, then you got the Dow, and then the Russell 2000. Each of them testing and rejecting Stevie's green line. And that, folks, that is bullish tells us that the trend is still in place out here. Oh, I know where I was picking up that extra audio in my ear. Now we shut that off, so that's good. So that's really, that sums up the market. Uh, you and I, we could just simply go out and, um, I don't know, what would you like to do today? I'd say let's not go ahead to the beach. It's a bit cloudy, although not a bad day to get just a mild sunburn out there. But uh, basically, the, that's the that's the markets. All right, but we won't end there because we've got a bunch of questions that have come in. Some that we didn't get to yesterday. We're going to get to those today. In fact, let's uh, let's begin uh, by doing that. And so we have uh, GV. That was Jerry yesterday. Now, Jerry, we're going to be able to uh, kind of. Uh, you know, uh, you know, the expression of what kill two birds with or kill kill two birds with one stone out there. We're going to try to do that because we've got Jerry on one side that is thinking of going long light sweet crude. He wants to use USO for that. And I'll open up the USO. You know that uh, Jerry and I and you, we're going to go take a look at light sweet crude as opposed to looking at what's going on inside the charts for USO. But here you can see USO below the bottom of its daily profile. The uh, USO for the weekly is above the top of its weekly profile. And the monthly is trading with inside the range of found resistance at 1285. That was the top of its weekly profile. But it's really going to be more about this set of charts here for uh, Jerry. And uh, we've got, uh, I'll get the name of the other individual who wrote in because while Jerry might, wants to go long, the other individual wants to go short. And that's how we're going to go ahead and knock off two birds, so to speak, with one arrow. Not a stone. This is not the stone age, it's the arrow age. Hey, look at the right hand chart of Light Sweet Crude right now. You tell me, where's price headed to? We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at uh, Lightspeed Crew. We're doing that for two of our uh of our listeners out there, uh, Jerry, and the other one I'll just go by OG is the uh, name. And OG wants to go short, or is short, actually. And the question yesterday, you know, uh, do we see Light Sweep Crude continuing to move lower? Now, Jerry wants to go ahead and buy Light Sweep Crude. And so from just simply from a pro profile perspective out here, we can see that price is trading below the bottom of the daily profile. Uh, then the weekly with regard to Light Sweep Crude, now this is where it's different when we take a look at the actual Light Sweep Crude contract here. Now I'm using my, uh, my synthetic version, because uh, I like synthetic oil, but the synthetic version of, uh, of Light Sweet Crude so that I can get our monthly, accurate monthly, quarterly, and even weekly profiles out here. And remember, when we took a look at USO, on a weekly basis, price was above the profile. When we take a look at Light Sweet Crude, and USO is, is, is its directional trading is based upon what's going on in Light Sweet Crude. That's why we want to be able to really take a look at focus on the underlying instrument, not the ETF so much out here. So in this case here, what we can say is price is broken through a level of support OG. That was at 60.25. This is day number three below that. And then we look at the weekly profile. This is a brand new profile formed this week. It's solid. It's in. And this would suggest that where price is going to move back to, that's right, move back to, is 56 dollars and 94 cents now we can also see that on a monthly basis of course the month hasn't ended but price is now trading back below the monthly profile the bottom of that profile that's 59.77 so we're about 50 55 cents uh below that right now uh so to answer both your questions <clears throat> in jerry's case 
the time to buy might be at about 56.94. I know you're looking for an entry. We'd want to see some kind of pattern unfold on the daily time frame chart. If I pull the daily time frame chart over here right now, the only pattern we have is the topping pattern. And that is wave number seven to the upside. And uh, so we've got a confirmed top. Um, these uh, green lines here, those were breakdown levels. So they're more. we were more interested in those as price was moving up. And when it got above that, told us that price was going to continue to move higher out there. Um, so we're not so worried. I'm not as much worried about them to the downside. Only going to be in bar number three of a TD setup nine count. So OG, it looks like. Light sweet crude is continuing lower. Now, I didn't say today, did I? But it looks like overall light sweet crude wants to head lower. The reason why I say not so fast or not today or I don't want somebody necessarily to take any action is if we go look at a 30-minute time frame chart, what we can see and the reason, well, that's gold. We didn't want to look at gold, did we? That was actually a 240-minute chart for gold. Let's actually come over here and grab the right chart. That makes it a lot easier. It makes it much smoother when I do that. And here, now we've got the 30-minute time frame chart for light sweet crude. Why did Stevie say, well, just hold your horses here? here um, or hold my horses and the reason is because on the 30 minute time frame chart we can see how price is moving lower generated roads momentum indicator bottom signal on the 30 minute we've just seen price trading sideways out here so we don't have any key breaks of uh, support support now would be yesterday's low out here with regard to light sweet crude so let's come back here and take a look at that and, and we don't have that but if you were to see that and I, I anticipate that we would that's the message right now coming from the daily and the uh, weekly charts out there so I hope that that helps you out guys sorry we didn't get to the to those questions uh, yesterday but uh, glad that we could do that today HD wrote in yesterday and HD wanted to uh, he has long Apple and is uh, loving it and just simply is asking the question, cautiously holding it. AAPL is a ticker symbol there. And the charts look like it might make it up to $350. Right now trading at $310.48. So the, if we take a look at, you know, what are we going to use for a price measurement tool? Well, we could come back to the monthly time frame chart. Certainly that might be somewhat clean out here. And in the monthly time frame chart, our B point is going to be back in 2016, what it looks like to Stevie. So... Uh, well, it would be helpful if I actually went ahead and uh, turned that study on. Let me see if I've got that study on here. If not, we're going to add it. Uh, if not, we're going to add it. That means we're going to add it. I don't see it. That's uh, unusual. But, uh, hey, it, in just a moment, Steve, we will have that taken care of. So now we've added that tool. Let's go take a look at the price projection tool. Of course, that's brought to us by Progressive, the insurance company out there. Flow. I believe is her name, Steve Flo. But we've got uh, May of 2016. That's your A point, the low down there. Your B point out here is going to be uh, October of 2018. And then the retracement down into January of 2019. That's when the low came in. Now, what, just out of curiosity, on a monthly time frame, 789 million shares uh, back in October of 2018. When that was passed, it was passed with 622 million, then 448, 598, and we're 227. So uh, it's up above a swing point with lighter volume. Hey, volume's only one metric out here. If you actually take a look at Apple, and the question was specifically, will this get to 350? Now, this is a monthly time frame chart, so we're going to cut out a lot of the noise, the daily time frame, the weekly time frame right now. I can't say that we've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside, but I will say we have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. Why would Stevie say both those things just to confuse me? Well, the answer is pretty simple. I can say that now because we're above the one-to-one -one level. So for goodness sakes, let's just talk about a little dose of reality here. Now, here's what I want you to uh, focus on here, HD, and that is that the move off of the lows in 2019 have been substantially stronger than that A to B move, the 2016 to 2018 move out there. We've maintained that same angle. And this says that, hey, 325 is in the cards, 375 is in the cards out here. That's what the longer term monthly chart shows us. Now, that's using just simply market profiles, take a look at an A to B equals CD pattern. But, you know, if we go look at the monthly time frame chart out here, and if there is a reason to be cautious, um, the only reason to be cautious right now inside of Apple is the mere fact that price is stretched. Price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. On a monthly basis, price went ahead and bypassed that TD setup nine count out here. And if Apple continues to move higher, 
I can't make this call with certainty just yet, but it appears to me if Apple continues to move higher and there's nothing yet in the cards that we see that says that it won't, this uh, this uh, Rhodes momentum indicator signal could end up uh, vanishing. It'll stay in place for the candles that it was present, but without a bearish reversal candle, it's just a caution sign. And the reason for HD tax would be cautious. So that was the monthly time frame chart. I'm sure that what HD would like to know and what you might like to know is what else is going on on those more noisier charts. Well, if we just simply back things down to the weekly time frame out here. Do we have a topping signal, a topping pattern? And the answer is no. It would have been last week's high. Uh, once price got above that, told us that the TD9 count was uh, just a uh, hiccup, if you will, in the... Uh, on the weekly time frame. So no, no bottoming. Uh, no, I know we could do wave counts. We should do wave counts. Let's go simply go ahead and do those. And you're only in wave number uh, four. Maybe you are in wave number. We come all the way back to the uh, 2019 low wave number six or wave number four. In either event, we don't see a top yet in Apple on that time frame. Of course, if there were going to be a top that would form, it would start on the shorter term time frames. And one of those shorter term time frames would be the daily. And on the daily, we just have price movement higher, doing less relative energy. Again, just a reason to be cautious. But uh, all in all, Apple still looks PDG. And we all know what that stands for, don't we? Pretty darn good. So, HD, thanks for waiting an extra day for the review of Apple. But uh, I would stay put at this stage, and let's just continue to watch. If there's a bearish reversal candle, then we've got some type of pullback that would be in place. But we don't have that as we speak right now at 126 in the afternoon. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So Earl writes in, and Earl the Pearl, he says, hey, Steve, hey, Earl, uh, is the first full week of January trading an indicator for the year? It's up so far. Now, I think that's a great question because it's a lot of propaganda that puts that gets put out there. And so I want to answer that question by allowing you to answer that question. And if you're watching us on Tiger TV, I believe that you can do that. If we take a look at this chart, this takes uh, the last 86 years, day by day, painstakingly day by day, because I'm the one that did it, and averages out each of those days to come up with what the average annual seasonal cycle is for the Dow. Now, what this pattern here shows us, Earl, and everybody else that's out there, so I'll just walk you through it, because those of you that are not looking at the chart can't answer that question for Earl. If you are looking at it, you absolutely can answer that question, right? Because the Dow, on average, makes a high on January 6th. Now, I mean... That's the average. We don't worry about it, whether it's January 6th or it's January 9th or it's the 10th or the 11th or what have you. But it typically makes a top in early January and then it pulls back into the end of January. Let's just assume that the Dow just simply followed this pattern no matter what, because this was the average pattern. And what typically would this would indicate over the last 86 years is in the month of January, first the first week, a lot of times that's up. Of course, it depends on when January 6 falls in that first week. But most likely what this also shows us is that by the end of January, price is really below where it started in the beginning of the year out there. And yet that's when you have your big run, the end of January into the middle of May or the uh, middle of July out there. It's really the July. No, they say sell in May and go away. It's really the July high that you're more concerned with, not really the May high out there. But they'll never change that. They, they, the media out there, they'll they'll never change that. They'll just load you. They'll just they'll, they'll just load you up with a bunch of. Hey, I'll use a I'll use a uh, what's what's that guy who's running for president uh, Biden? A bunch of malarkey out there. Didn't he do the malarkey tour or something like that? Yeah, that's what I wanted to say when they chose to do the malarkey tour. But hey, Earl. No, I think that the best thing to do with regard to trading out here is uh, just follow the patterns. And I don't believe that whether the uh, Dow is up the first week of January or not, to me, that's not a tradable pattern out there. So, But thanks for the question. Uh, this is what the seasonality uh, shows us, and so you can go from there. Now, if we fall back and take a look at, hey, how are these markets trading, you know, we bullish, we bearish out here. It is important to note on your charts at least the uh, 2019 in this case here, the prior year high, prior year low, you start trading above that. Well, that, that is bullish out there. If you take a look at this chart here, we've got the uh, you've got the ES, the NQ, and the uh, Dow. You've got the continuous contracts all down the left-hand side. The next to that, you've got the New York Stock Exchange above the 2019 high. Russell 2000, we talked about how that was the week indice out here. But when we took a look at the equity futures contract, this week's been nothing more than a test of its weekly oscillator and change line. Stevie's green line, it's bullish. Even though right here, we're on our chart, we're looking at, we're saying, well, it's bullish, but it's uh, cautiously bullish. Some high still above the 2019 high. Then you go to the S&P above it, the Dow above it, NASDAQ composite above it, gold back below 1567.60. So just like with the Russell 2000, those of you that would look at this set of tools out here, this set of charts, and say, okay, we're trading below in the Russell 2000 and 2019 high. Yeah, I get Stevie's. It's bullish. just means that support hasn't broken. But this is not breaking out topside like the other indices are. And I would ask you, is gold breaking out topside? And the answer as of 134 in the afternoon on January 10th is Kevin's to Betsy. Whoever Betsy is, no. Nor is silver. Silver never even made it. Close right now to its 2019 high, nor have bonds. 
So there's kind of like the bigger picture. I just thought I would go ahead and throw that in as a uh, twofer, so to speak. Let's go to our next question. We're almost running out of questions. Well, we got one from Peak D. So Peak asked the question, what's our shorter-term target for the GLD? Really, it would most likely be, Peak, what is the shorter-term target for the gold contract? And so for that, we're going to go take a look at the 30-minute time frame. Okay, let's go ahead and pull this up, refresh ourselves as to what gold is doing. I know that you had bugged out yesterday. I, oh, I think it was Twitter you were asking about. I did that at the very end of the show. So here, when we take a look at what gold has done so far. Now, here's the 30-minute time frame chart, but I'm first pull over the daily because you need to take a look at the daily out here. And we take a look at the daily. I was cautioning people yesterday and, and, uh, and, and everybody else, be careful if you were short which was the right uh, message out there, that uh, what we saw take place yesterday, and it was 2 o'clock yesterday morning, that was a bullish test. What? So you got wave number 7, letter G, to the upside here for the uh, gold contract. Uh, that says sellers should be in control. If there's going to be a change in trend, if sellers are in control, what do they do? Their first objective is to try to bust out support. On this chart, where was the first level of support? Stevie's green line. Did they do that? No. Is the line green? Yes. Does that mean that that is a bullish test? Absolutely. Prices also happens to be above the top of its daily profile, so that too is bullish out here. So, Pete, this does say that what gold wants to do is move higher. Now, we don't have any profiles that you and I can use, right? Because that could be a level of resistance out there. Uh, we don't have a TD set of nine count. We don't have any real resistance out here that you and I can use, at least on this chart um, and several other charts that I would try to pull up. So what that really means is you and I have got to be looking at shorter-term time frame charts to try to figure out where price might head to out here. And so this made a TD set up nine count bottom yesterday. So at the same time that the daily was testing a key level support, the 30 minute chart was also creating a bottoming pattern. And the answer to your question, where is this thing headed to? I don't know. I know that's terrible. You don't usually hear me say, I don't know. Well, here's what we can say. Well, we think that the next price objective inside of gold, as long as it can trade above 1561.60, and right now it's at 1560 peak, so you got to watch this 1560 1561.60 area. That is resistance here. I'll just expand the lines out here. Let me just add a few more bars that we want to go see the TD9 count resistance levels there is set kind of low anyways. Let's see. Will this bring us all the way across? Will it bring us all the way across? Yeah, pretty close, right? So there, you can see how what gold did, right, formed a nice bottom, right? The daily time frame, I mean, I'm saying right. You might be saying wrong. I'm just saying it formed a bottom by testing the oscillator and change line. Then on the 30-minute time frame chart, you get a TD setup, nine count. Price closes over 1553.60. Does that today, this morning. That would have been resistance. Now it's trading it to level two resistance. I don't know what to call it. Level one, level two. Uh, yeah, the White House calls them phase one, phase two. I'll call it phase two. It's really, you know, 156160. So this could be it, but I don't see another pattern out there. I just see price at resistance. So you're asking how far can a GLD go? You really need to base that on what's going on on the underlying instrument, which would be uh, the uh, gold contract out here. So what I would share with you is uh, no reason to sell based upon the 30-minute chart. I mean, price above Stevie's green line, price is above even the 30-minute profiles. So maybe just trading between support and resistance, you know what I mean? Right, 1552.70 would be your support level out here, and we know at 1561.60 it's resistance. So if price can close above 1561.60, isn't it amazing, Peak? And everybody else out there, we got these lines drawn that you know, or, you know you'd, you'd be saying to yourself, well, how, how does that work? How is it? Can it possibly be that easy to identify support or resistance? Uh, it is, and so it close above that. 157630 would be your next uh, target. So you're kind of in the middle right now, right, between support and resistance. And that's why I really can't answer the question, where is it headed to next? We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. 
A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, let's go check in with our friend Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing just great, Steve. I appreciate you taking the call. Um, sure. Hope you're My doing pleasure. well. Yes, I am. So uh, Bunge Limited, is that uh, what we're going to look at, BG? This is actually, it's a B, G, and an S at the end. It's a B and G Foods. Got it. Okay. Give me a second here to pull up the right chart because uh, – uh, I was kind of looking at that chart, and I was like, all right, well, Brent's going to throw me for a loop here. What's he looking at on that chart? <laughs> so this makes this makes up more sense to me. Okay, so tell tell us what you're looking at when you take a look at the BGS, folks, by the way. That's a ticker symbol, B&G Foods, Inc., so uh, fire away. So my question is, uh, it looks like it may have kind of completed a pattern up there. So if you take the November low and then go up to the most recent high around 18, uh, that could yeah. have completed a pattern up there, and then I just wonder if this is a, a retracement, and if so, what the you know percentage is, and if what your thoughts are as far as this retracement is this something kind of viable? Did it get down to some kind of support? Is it you know be more patient, let the thing, you know, is it going to you know potentially form another pattern down you know lower? Just I want your thoughts on this worth yeah. that at this point. Okay. Okay, I got you. So we're going to go right to it, and, and, and I'm not going to focus as much on the – although here are the set of profile charts, prices below the daily, trading with inside the weekly, trading with inside the monthly. Instead, we're going to go right to the charts because uh, – these other charts because I think they'll answer the question. So uh, are you, are you, I assume you're, you're looking at this to consider taking a long position. I am, yeah. It has a good dividend, you know, whether it's – and it seems like it's been pretty consistent. It's, it's actually over 10 percent, so – is okay. one I was looking at, you know, somewhat Great. for that, and also because it is, you know, 
near its lows, not at the low, but you know, it's down yes. closer to the bottom than the top. So sure, sure, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Okay, so so I don't know why right now from the daily time frame chart, I don't know why the rally stopped where it did around eighteen fifty. We'll go look at the other charts and they may tell us. But in the daily time frame chart, it it doesn't tell us that. But what the daily time frame chart does tell us is the following things. One, you had breakout support. That's a TD9 count breakout support at 1584. Now, my experience is when I see another, when I see a TD9 count form on a pullback, which is what the BGS is doing right now, but it forms that TD9 count pattern above support, above a breakout area, that that is bullish. Yesterday was bar number eight. As long as today, uh, the close is below bar number five, which is in like the 1740-ish range out there. That looks pretty solid. You're going to get a confirmed TD9 count. Now, whether or not price is trading below support, that being the bottom of the box, but you would expect that is something that is trying to form a bottom using this type of pattern. You know, is this going to just get a counter trend rally to 1720, uh, 1813? I don't know. Or is it going to simply make its next move up to 1964? Those are the, the, that's the future. You and I don't know it. We just want to understand where the battles would be fought out here. But right now, what BGS is telling us is that today you've got a uh, you're going to get a buy signal on it just simply using that pattern. Your stop would need to be anything trading to close below 1584. Would say I'm going to go revisit the uh, the prior low out there from back in November, which you were referring to. So let's go look at the weekly time frame chart. Let's try to get see if we've got consistent messages out here. And on the weekly time frame, now that we pull that open, we can see that it formed a nice solid roads momentum indicator bottom. But what it did then is it after that it went on to form a TD setup nine count top. So now you and I know where we couldn't see on the daily time frame chart, why did this thing top where it did? We now have the weekly chart. And so the exact opposite of patterns that we were just looking at is really present here on the weekly. So this makes sense. It forms a high. Sellers should be able to push price back to support. And now the question is, will they be able to push it back to the 1575 level? At 1575 on a weekly basis is where that TD nine count breakout occurred. And about 1593 is Stevie's red line out there. So the weekly, the daily says I bottom. The weekly is saying, I've topped, or we can see the topping pattern, but sellers haven't been able to push price all the way down to support out there. Um, I'm not sure what to, to make of that read, right? You've got a you've got a, a valid bottom on the daily, and the weekly is saying I haven't really tested support yet. So let's go look at the monthly, just see what the heck is going on in the larger picture. And then the monthly time frame, as we open this up, well, now what we know is that not only did the weekly top with a TD set of nine count that was taking place on the monthly chart as price was simply testing Stevie's red line. And what I do mean is it is red. It tells us on a long-term basis, we have a falling price oscillator below zero. So on the bigger picture, this is still bearish. You got to wave number uh, six um, a couple of weeks ago. And so I would be, has, even though you've got that buy signal on the daily, and maybe that's it, I'd be hesitant on this uh, because of the what the weekly chart is communicating to us and now uh, what the monthly chart is communicating to us. So that, that's what I see in looking at the charts. That's great, Steve. I'll just be more patient. And I have been watching it for a while, not super long, but, you know, kind of just spalled it for a bit here and then. Uh, it's it's easier for me when I have been following something for a longer period of time. You kind of get a little bit more familiar with the patterns, and and so I'll just I'll be patient and see what it does here. And what you told me is very helpful. I appreciate it. Okay, um, great, uh, good, good. Yeah, good. just thank you very much. Again, have a great weekend, and and I appreciate you taking the time to look at that. So uh, my pleasure, care, as right? always. Uh, you too. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Again, the ticker symbol, folks, we were looking at was BGS. Uh, we've got a request inside the uh, Tiger's Den, a couple of them, actually. Ruby wants to look at sugar. Uh, so let's go take a look at uh, uh, no sugar tonight in my coffee. And that's only because I don't drink coffee. But if we do take a look at sugar, you've got a nice move that is ongoing today. Uh, we take a look at the March contract out here. What it looks like to me, Ruby, Ruby Tuesday, is that uh, what uh, Sugar wants to do is maybe complete an A to B equals CD to the upside. That would take you into the 1430 level. That would also create or could create a potential butterfly sell pattern. You got a wide ranging bar today. Price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. No reason to sell just yet. Um, but it does look to me like sugar wants to continue to move higher into that 1430 area. So, Ruby, I hope that that helps you out. If you were looking for something else 
other than what I just provided to you. Go ahead and type that in, and we'll go back to it. In the meantime, uh, Satish wants to take a look at uh, ticker symbol S. SPGI, so, uh, and Satish is long that, okay, you're welcome, Rubies, SPGI, and that is the S&P Global Inc., and you're long, so I guess the question would be, should I stay long out here? Well, if we pull over the daily, first, prices above the daily, the weekly, the monthly profiles out there, they're not going to help us, but other than to tell us prices above resistance. So if we take a look at the daily time frame chart, um, we don't see any type of topping signal on the daily, and support the first level of support would be 283.24. So no reason to uh, exit or jettison the S&P Global Inc. Not that I see on the daily time frame. On the weekly time frame, Satish, what we're going to see is prices moving higher, doing less, doing it with less relative energy, um, and it's only a caution sign right now. Be it would be more of a uh, be be more more than cautious if we were to see some type of bearish reversal candle. That's not going to happen this week. Will it happen next week? I don't know. But right now, to answer your question, uh, the weekly chart says remain, and the monthly time frame chart says stay with this position. No levels of support, only potential signals of a top. And uh, so uh, best of luck with that trade. But I'd stay put with SPGI. That was for Satish in the Tiger's Den. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up, uh, or it's off 43 points. S&P is up about two. Uh, let's uh, go take a look at McDonald's for Dennis. Uh, Dennis uh, wants to take a look at maybe trimming this position. Here's what we know above the daily, above the weekly profiles, and running into potential resistance at the uh, center of its uh, monthly profile. That's at a price point of 208.83 out here. Bear structured box. So we have both buyers and sellers there. And certainly sellers at 220.193. And you're saying you want to sell this between 215 and 220. So to get to 215, this has got to clear. It's what's important is you want to see this clear 208.83. Doesn't look like it'll do it this week. You'd like to see it do it next week. If we take a look at the daily time frame. We said price was above its uh, daily profiles out here. If we look for any kind of topping pattern, we can see the bottom. Right, you can see the road momentum indicator bottom pattern back in November. It is in wave number seven today. Now that can extend uh, as it has because it was in wave number seven. Uh, well, it's in wave number seven yesterday, the day before, uh, and it looks like it may confirm wave number seven today. Now, wave number seven can be a top. So now you've got the. So you you would want to perhaps anticipate a pullback, right? You've got the. Uh, was the weekly or the monthly that was trading into was the monthly trading into potential resistance the center of its profile now the daily shows wave number seven no reason to sell just yet but i want you to anticipate if we were to see a uh, pullback uh, and that pullback in mcdonald's could be to 202.33 if that would be normal in fact we can see that the stevie's red line turned green so there should be a test of price and stevie's green line at some point in time over the coming trading sessions on a weekly basis however Price is above Stevie's green line, so that's a nice out here. And in fact, uh, this formed a nice TD nine count bottom, and it did it right at the uh, breakout level of 193.32. And this would actually say you're going to get your 215, and be patient out there. So the daily time frame, if we see a pullback, it's to be expected and anticipated. You don't want to see it break through support. And the weekly is saying, you know, I think I'm going to be able to make the run to 220.84, right in your wheelhouse, Dennis. So that's what these charts are telling us. Hey, folks, uh, thanks for being here. It's been a great week. Let's have a, a great weekend out there. And, of course, stay tuned for the next couple of hours. Two great hosts. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. David White coming up. Tom O'Brien to take us on home. And I'll be back with you on Magical and Marvelous Monday. Thanks for all the questions this week. Let's do it again next week. Take care, folks.